And today we're going to be showing you a Mickey Mouse themed design where we have a four dimensional Mickey Mouse who has magnets embedded in his body and then you can either have him look like he's the regular classic Mickey Mouse with the red shorts and the yellow shoes or he can be all dressed up and fancy with his wizard outfit on. He goes very well with the Minnie Mouse design I showed you yesterday, so if you missed that one, I will put a link to it in the description box below. Otherwise, there will be a little click button for it at the end of the video, too, so stay tuned for that. I hope you like both of these ones as much as I do, and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. We are going to begin just like we did yesterday's video and we're going to be sculpting the base of our Mickey Mouse. So yesterday we sculpted the base of the Minnie Mouse, today it's going to be Mickey Mouse, and they are almost identical. One difference that you want to do between the Mickey Mouse and the Minnie Mouse is yesterday's Minnie, the magnet that was in the top of her head to hold on her bow was offset to an ear. For Mickey Mouse, you want to place it as close to the edge of the top of his head between his ears as you can because that's where the brim, the thickest part of the brim of his hat, his wizard hat, is going to set. So that's where you want that magnet to be. And the other thing is when you place the magnet in for his shorts, you want it to be towards the bottom of his body because when he's wearing just shorts, you don't want the magnet to be, you know, in his chest or his belly because that part is going to just stay black and exposed. He's going to have an exposed chest and belly. So you don't want the magnet to be there. When you're doing his legs, it's just the same thing. It's just a little bit different um, shaping, a little different like position that he's in. The small differences all in all between the two designs as far as this particular stage of the design goes. So when you are sculpting it and you're doing this, you just wanna be a little bit conscientious of the, the differences. Then when you go to sculpt his arms, same thing, we're going to do it on a nail form backing just like we did yesterday's. The one um, biggest difference here is because we are going to be doing it like he's in that phantasmic, really excited, like big arms out pose. We're going to be doing two straight arms with them extended at an upward angle so that he looks like he's really excited and he's got this big thing to show everybody. So that is the pose of his arms with that I picked with a certain, you know, style and um, emotional state in mind. So if you weren't doing the phantasmic outfit, you could switch it out however you want. Even if you are doing the phantasmic outfit, you could switch it out. But for me, I just felt like that was the appropriate way to do that. After we have his arms sculpted, they are hard. They are, the word crispy is always what comes to mind for these pieces. Once they've been really, they're really, really hard. They're cured. They are fully just ready to go. They shouldn't bend at all. So to me, crispy is just the word that comes, that my brain always wants to say. When they've reached that stage, then you can glue them on. You don't want to try to glue them on any time before that. You want to make sure that they are completely set up, completely cured. You're going to glue them in place, blend them into his body with a little bit more black acrylic, and then fill in behind them with copious amounts of clear acrylic, enough that it really holds them. It's really strong, really secure, but not too much where it'll show on the sides that there's all this clear acrylic built up behind that and one of my arms fell off anyway oh good times good times after we have that done then you can go through with some tan or cover pink color acrylic and you can go through and add his face when you are sculpting mickey's face you're going to add that heart shaped or m shaped forehead line and then you're going to bring it down you're going to add his cheeks his chin and then eventually you're going to be adding the thickness of the area around his nose his snout that comes out and blends down I do want to ask everybody a question. If you watched yesterday's video, you'll notice that I showed you every single moment of sculpting Minnie Mouse as far as, you know, the whole design start to finish with Mickey Mouse. I am making this video a little bit shorter, a little bit more short and sweet. Um, not a whole bunch, but you know, I shortened it a little bit and I am doing things a little differently in my editing where I took out some footage that I found was too repetitious from yesterday to today where I didn't think it was really necessary. Do you like this style in general where I kind of shrink things down? I delete some footage that is similar either to something that you just saw from a very recent video or saw within the same video. Is that something that is preferred? Just like I said, to eliminate the repetition or do you like seeing it just so that you can get every single step of the process and it doesn't seem like anything is left out? Let me know in the description box below. I'm trying to just find ways to make my videos a little bit more streamlined. So if that is something that you like, please let me know. Otherwise, for this design, we're going to be wrapping the nail very tightly with some aluminum foil. You want to wrap around the whole body of the nail. For the first one, when you're just sculpting Mickey's shorts and shoes because he doesn't have the hat or the, the long coat on, you don't have to do it very tightly around his head. You really just have to focus on getting it nice and snug and pressed down along the lower portion of his body. So we're going to be sculpting his two shoes. For the shoes, we want to make sure that they are touching. As long as the shoes are touching, you only have to have a magnet in one foot. If the shoes are not touching, then you're going to need to have a magnet at the base of each leg or within each foot. I find it to be a little easier just to have them together, the shoes in one piece. And 
part of the reason it's easier is just because it's one piece to try to keep track of. You know, if you drop it, then it's something a little bit bigger, easier to find. It's not quite as hard. I drop things all the time. So that's always a concern of mine is if I happen to lose this, will I be able to find it again? And with something twice the size, because it's the two stuck together, the answer is more commonly going to be yes than no. After you have the first shoe done, that's going to hold onto the magnet. Always start with the one that has the magnet inside of it. Then sculpt the second shoe, touching the first shoe, either overlapping it or kind of going around it, somehow being attached. Once that's done, then you can grab your red acrylic and you can be sculpting his little shorts. When you're sculpting the shorts, you can see, hopefully when you press your aluminum foil down onto the nail, you should be able to see where his legs are so that you can decide where um, the leg holes of the shorts would be and you can sculpt those in. As you are sculpting up and around the magnet, it will add some thickness to this particular section of the nail into the design and it'll look a little bit thicker just because you have the thickness of two magnets building this area up. Hopefully though, as long as everything is nice and smooth and it shouldn't, it won't look uh, somehow clunky or too thick or just wrong. That's sometimes the problem when you're trying to do something that's got extra elements like these designs where you have little magnetic pieces and you try to get too fancy. Sometimes it ends up looking just a little bit not quite right, if that makes any sense at all. Just that it you're trying for too much and things are, you're trying to make them too small, but if you can't make them too small, then they look too big and you just have those issues. Hopefully in this particular circumstance, as long as you try to keep all of the pieces the right size as far as the perimeter of them goes, the extra thickness, particularly on this pair of shorts, is where I noticed it the most. Hopefully isn't too distracting, which is kind of the goal. You don't want anybody to notice that there's magnets inside there. You want somebody to look at this nail and think, huh, that's cute, and then take off the extra clothes and then have them be mind blown that you can switch the outfits out. So you never want your design to have that moment where somebody could be looking at it and being like, that's kind of weird, I wonder why that looks like that. And then you're like, oh, it has a magnet in it, that makes sense. You don't want somebody to be wondering why it looks thick, why it looks strange. You want them to be completely just shocked that you can take this off and switch it out, that they would never have even considered that that would be a possibility. That's the, that is the goal. So just try to keep things as smooth and um, just complete looking as you can. Now to be sculpting our little phantasmic outfit. The most interesting thing with this design is that you have to sculpt around his legs <laughs> because the legs show. So he's got this blue, almost like leotard looking outfit on, and then he's got brown shoes and he's got this big cloak or coat that he's wearing. And the coat, you can see through between his legs and you can see the back of the coat. And then around his body, he's got the front of it. So you have to be able to see his legs. And your two options for this is to sculpt his legs again and just make it go up and over the top. Or you can sculpt this outfit, leaving the space for the legs free and open, which is the way that I did it. And the whole time I'm sculpting this, I was thinking to myself, oh dear, is this going to look okay? Is this going to look right when I go to take this off? Is it going to seem like it is strange when I go to put it back on? Are you going to be able to see these odd little gaps? So I was, I don't want to say nervous. <laughs> I was unsure of how this one was going to turn out specifically, this this outfit. It was one of those like, hmm, this is going to be an exercise in patience and seeing if it actually works. And so you'll see how it turned out momentarily. But that was just one thing that I was, when I was looking at it, I'm like, I have to get this foil to be on it as smooth as possible. I have to really make sure that that foil is snug in order for it to turn out right. So if you're recreating this design and you're doing this particular outfit, when you are pressing the foil down around the legs and like around the bottom of the body, just make sure that they're smooth. You're also going to want to sculpt his hat on and then you can slowly, carefully peel that little phantasmic outfit off, being very careful not to break any of those thin pieces of acrylic that are around the legs. Take it off. Like I said, slow and carefully. You can see that little phantasmic outfit. At this point, it looks so funny just because the legs are not there. And then if you're me, you're going to immediately try it on and not show you guys. And I'm going to make you wait. Then we're going to be painting all of the little details on his face. We're going to be doing the black outlines around his eyes, around the top of his nose. We're going to be doing um, the outlines on his mouth, some on his gloves, just any place where it feels like we need to have an outline. Because Mickey Mouse has a black body, black ears, black arms, there really isn't that much to do as far as outlining goes on the rest of his body. The only places you really need to focus those little outlines on on are his face and his hands. Once you have those outlines done, you're going to want to go back through and add any other details that you feel like you need to. 
filling in his eyes, adding details to his to his mouth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I also noticed that as you just saw I painted a little bit of his head. I noticed that I could see just a hint of the silver of the magnet, so I wanted to cover that up so that you couldn't see that magnet. So that's what I did with the black. If you notice that with your pieces that the magnet shows just a little bit here or there, you can certainly paint over it with black acrylic paint and nobody would ever be the wiser. I'm going to be adding in his tongue and then going back to black, I'm going to be adding in his pupils. Once that is done, you can apply some gel sealer over the background, making that background shine. This color, not only did I feel like it was appropriate for the background for Minnie Mouse, and I did want them to be the same, I also felt like it really worked for the Fantasmic outfit. Then we're going to be applying some matte top coat over Mickey's painted areas, and then I'm going to put the shorts and the shoes that are just the classic outfit on him, and then I'm going to be adding a couple little outlines to them. Matte top coat over those pieces. And then after that's done, you can see how the Fantasmic outfit fits. It looks perfect. You, I never would have thought it actually would turn out as smoothly as it did where it really clipped in and around the legs that well. I expected to see little glimpses of the background through or just some you know, undesirable effect from it, but it actually looks really, really good. I'm so happy with it. After that's been detailed, top coat it, and then these are done. I think this little Mickey mini set is the cutest thing ever. Definitely check out the Minnie Mouse one. If you missed it from yesterday, there will be a link to it in the description box below, or at the very end of this video, there will be a little click button that you can go straight to it too, if you want to make it easier on yourself and don't want to go through the description box. Otherwise, there's also a link to purchase the magnets that I used in this video in the description box below. So if you are looking for those, that's a good place to start and I will see you all next time. Bye.